Welcome to another Photoshop video. For this one I will focus on the color grading of my very first proper drone image. So in this shot we will be applying way stronger sunset colors, adding summer orange tones to the sky and also changing the highlights in the village below. So without much more talking, let's go. Here we are in the camera raw editor and the first thing I do is like usually I'm changing the profile. As I want to have more saturation I'm going with Adobe Landscape. And you can clearly see why we get much richer blue tones and much richer yellow orange tones down there. Now let's head into the basic panel. As I want to give this whole image a more sunset like look, I am going to change the white balance temperature. It's already quite high, but I want to push it some more, introducing just a bit more warmth to the shot. Let's see, I think that's a good spot. Also, I do want to add some tint just to introduce this purplish color cast on purpose because I just feel it makes the sunset look much, much better. Now, let's focus on the exposure a little bit. Now, looking at this again, we can see we have the whole luminance range covered. In this case, I actually like to increase the highlights. This may end up in some overexposure. Actually, I think that's a good spot and we don't have any overexposure, so that's good. Then to add some more contrast, I'm going to bring down the shadows. Just a tiny bit, we don't want to underexpose anything. And then let's check out if we can increase the whites some more. Again, we don't get any overexposure, so that is looking good. And it also will help with the contrast. Now besides those sunset colors, I'd also like to apply some dreamy look. And for this reason, I usually just increase the blacks. This will reduce the contrast again, but it also helps make the whole image a lot softer. That's something I quite like, so I'm quite happy with this. Now let's also introduce some texture, and then I'm going to drop the clarity, which again is just for the soft look. I'm just doing it very careful here. I don't want to make it look too soft. But that's a good spot. And of course I'm also going to push the vibrance and let's push the saturation as well. And at this point you can see we have some very lovely colors in the sky already and also the foreground looks really really cool. So that is it for the basic adjustments. Now let's take a look at the local adjustments. First off, I do want to make the sky a little more dramatic and therefore I'm using a linear gradient and I'm only targeting the left side, just like that. And with this linear gradient I'm bringing down the exposure, making the left side darker and just adding some more contrast here. Alright, maybe we can make the gradient a little softer, but that looks really cool. Might as well rotate it a little bit. Okay. I do want to add a little bit of glow on the right side and also enchant the warmer tones in here some more. For this reason, I'm going to use a radial gradient. Actually, I'm going to use two differently sized radial gradients. First, let's create a big one like this. Again, I'm making sure the center of this one is outside of the image to get a more natural look and to add glow I am simply going to push the blacks and I'm also going to drop the dehaze. Just need to be careful to not overexpose too much. If there's a little bit of overexposure I think that's okay in those bright spots. Now let's introduce some more colors in here. I can do that by bringing up the temperature and I do also want to bring in some more tint. You can see the color is still not very visible. I can try to fix it bringing up the saturation. And if this doesn't help, I can always use this color box down here. And let's see, I want to add a warmer color tone somewhere in this range. And let's bring up the saturation. Let's add quite a bit here. And now we have a very nice sunset-like color tone in the sky with a very cool glow effect. However, as I said, I want to enhance that with a second radial gradient. 
This time, however, I'm creating a smaller one, just like that. And in here, I do want to make the sky a lot brighter, so I'm going to push the whites. And I'm pushing them quite a bit. And you can see we now have some overexposure, but I think it's okay in that area. And let's adjust the size a bit. But that is looking very, very cool. Let's compare to before. You can see we went from a very blue and rather flat image to something way more contrast rich and colorful. Speaking of the colors, let's head into the color grading. First off, I'm going to use the color mixer. In here, I'm just working on the hues a bit. Uh, let's see. First off, I'm going to drop the purple hue. This will reduce this purple color cast very, very slightly. And thus we get more blue color tones in the sky. Then I do want to bring up the magenta tones which will mainly affect the right side of the sky up there, making it a little warmer even. Let's bring down the red hue and the orange hue. And this will mainly affect the highlights on the ground and just helps make the lights of the village pop out a little more. So I guess that's it for the color mixer. Now to the most fun part, the split toning. Let's start with the highlights. And as usual, with sunset shots, I'm going to apply a warm color tone to the highlights. I think that's a good spot right there. Let's bring up the saturation. All right, that's looking really, really good. Then for the midtones, I am going with a cold color tone. Somewhere in this range. And I do want to bring down the saturation, however. Only want to have a very subtle blue tone in the mid-tones like that. And finally the shadows, again just going with a cold color tone in here. But this time I'm going to use a very high saturation. This is looking really really good. I can show you the before once more. And you can see a drastic change in colors. And we almost get this pastel color tones in the sky which is really really awesome. Now finally let's head into the calibration tab. And in here, again, something I do very often is to just drop the blue primary hue. Makes the blue tones a little more aqua-ish. You can see the highlights changing quite dramatically in here. Let's also bring up the saturation. Perfect. And then I'm heading into the details tab just to apply a little bit of sharpening. Perfect. And at this point, we can open it up in Photoshop to finish the editing. So, first off, I'd like to add a little more glow on the right side. Therefore, let's create a new layer. On this new layer, switch the blending mode to soft light. Pick up the brush by pressing B. And make sure the brush opacity is set to a lower value. Otherwise, the glow effect will end up way too strong. And for the foreground color, you can see I have picked an almost white color with a slight red color cast in it. And using this soft brush, I'm now going to paint in some glow just over the mountain edge. And I'm also playing around with different brush sizes just to make it look a little more natural. All right, that looks awesome. So then let's do a little more color grading and I'm going to use something I haven't used in a long time. In the adjustment layers menu, I'm going to apply a gradient map. This looks a bit strange at first, but let me show you how this works. I'm going to set the blending mode of this gradient map to overlay and let's bring down the opacity. I think that's a good spot right there. With those things set up, I'm going to click on the gradient up there. The point on the left side right here is the color which will get added to the shadows. The point on the right side right there is the color which will get added on the highlights. And in between you have the midtones. So what this means is I can target the shadows like this and apply a cold color tone on them. Think of it like split toning. Plus this will also add some more contrast to our image. So I think I do want to have a cold blue tone and also make it look rather dark, just like that. 
And for the highlights, I'm going with a very warm yellowish color tone, maybe even orange, just like that. And we can even adjust the midtones by creating another point in the middle. And in here, I do want to have a more of a red color tone, but not that saturated. So let's play around here until we get something that looks good to us. So I ended up with an orange tone in the middle, a very yellowish tone on the highlights and a very dark, almost purple color tone in the shadows. Besides the overlay blending mode, you can also try the soft light blending mode, which is a little bit weaker, but I actually think I prefer it for this image. So if I turn it on and off, you can see a quite big difference but it looks much, much better in my opinion. So at this point, I do want to check out the Nick Collection plugin. For that reason, I am going to select all those layers and merge them hitting Ctrl E. As most of you know, this is very destructive. So if you want to work non-destructive, I would suggest to create a smart object. Now to check the Nick Collection plugin, I'm going to filter Nick Collection and ColorFX Pro 4. And on this image, I'd like to start with the polarization effect do want to raise the strength quite a bit, just like that. And let's add another filter. I think I would try the skylight filter, which will just enhance those warm color tones some more. Just a little bit. I don't want to overdo it, but that looks good. And one more filter. Let's just try the classical soft focus. Of course, the first method is way overdone. I think I'm going with the second method, but bring down the strength quite a bit. So we do get this dreamy look with a little glow, but we won't overdo it. So this looks really, really good. Let's apply it like that. All right, and here we have the finished image. So I hope this Photoshop video was helpful and interesting. If you have questions left, as always, feel free to ask in the comments. And thank you very much for watching this video.